Okay guys, here we are again. Um, so I've had a bit of time out because I've rewired the machine. Uh, but <clears throat> anyway, first off, this is the the layout of each of these three modules that I've got controlling each of the um, each of the three coils. Um, so as you can see, you've got all the all the usual stuff, the diodes and things like that. Now I did originally set it up with these hundred watt. There we go, hundred watt resistors coming off the base of each transistor and then you know receiving the the signal from the uh, the trigger coil there um, <clears throat> but I've changed that now slightly so all we've got now is one 470 ohm half watt resistor there which then branches off to uh, the base of each transistor so hopefully if I can do this properly we should be able to see here um, there we go. Let's try and get this into focus. Right, there we go. So, you've got the little resistor in there coming out, then you've got the branch out into onto each of the bases of the transistors. So, there we go. Right, there we go. Now, I've changed the layout very slightly because... I was just having a real nightmare trying to get into all these connections here. Um, so I've set it up, I've replaced the transistors as well. Um, and also we've got these massive 5 amp shock diodes coming off of the um, collector of each of these transistors because with the single 1N4007 I it was I could feel like a little sort of buzzing sensation, like it was a very very low electric shock, like it wasn't um, draining the electricity away um, enough, quickly enough, or or whatever. Um, so I put two of those one M four double O sevens on, and that worked fine. There was no you could touch it, and there was no problem, no problems there at all. So I put these larger ones on anyway, just in case, and that, again it seems to be working fine. Um, that's it really and the, the, the only thing I've done differently as well is to you see these wires here now what I did was I took the input from each of the trigger wires from each of these coils each of these coils has a trigger, its own trigger wire took that went down to here, down to this little chop block here and then went through a, a resistor and a potentiometer and then back again into into this branch here for, for each of these pair of transistors and um, that was okay but I still uh, I'm, I just it just didn't seem to have the right amount of torque for me I mean I know they, these aren't proper motors they're not supposed to have torque but it just didn't seem as strong as when I'm when each of these modules is treated individually with its own resistor rather than you know mishmashing them all together down here and then running them through the, the potentiometer or resistor as I have there I have been testing out different resistances see what happens but anyway so I did this little chart here and um, as you can see I tried the coils in parallel and also in series now I took the, the parallel ones a lot more seriously as you can tell um, <clears throat> power out, power in, RPMs um, and did a lot more testing with these, got a lot more figures with series I tried a couple and it was very very poor very very poor indeed again I really don't know whether I wired them up wrong. Um, I wired them up so that I had the end of one uh, run coil leading on to the start of another. Um, so yeah, as I say, I don't know whether that's the right thing to do. But anyway, I, I wasn't very happy with these results. So I just thought, right, well, this is it. I mean, unfortunately, these 
results here, the power in is not actually particularly accurate because as you can see, hopefully, yeah, the amateur doesn't actually go down to zero. So you've got to add however much that is. I think that's about almost 0.5, or oh, sorry, take away 0.5 of an amp from these results I got over here. Um, so with the 470 ohm resistor here, this gives, say, you know, taking that half an amp away, you've got a roughly one amp there, input, half an amp on the power out, and roughly 2700 RPMs. Now, as it stands at the moment, that's how I've set it up. Uh, as you can see, I've taken the ammeters off because really, it's, you know, it doesn't, a lot of people on the forums are saying it doesn't really show exactly what's going on. Uh, I've got something hopefully in the pipeline. Um, going to speak to um, someone hopefully that might be able to help me out. Um, he deals a lot with solar technology, so um, there's a possibility that I might be able to get some more accurate figures for the ins and outs of power and voltage and all that sort of thing. Um, second option obviously is just to get a, a regular oscilloscope, but um, anyway we'll see. So, uh, just to sort of demonstrate the running of it, so I'm running off this little battery here and going charging this big old thing here. Now this seems to be a bit strange because I, I charge it up and it'll go to, well, anything up to about 13, 13 and a half. Um, depending on the start charge, I mean the, the start charge at the moment is 9.92. Now I did this a couple of days ago, it was about 7. I started this up just running from this little battery and I only had it on the 20 volt scale but it went off that scale um, as showing us the, 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 the voltage on this battery. So now what was going on there, but it's obviously working you know, the transistors are working, that sort of thing, but um, anyway, we start at this voltage, um, it'll get up to about maybe 12 or 13, it'll get to a certain point, no higher than 13 and a half, and then it will just very slowly start to come down, I mean, I don't really know what's going on. This battery, when I got it, well, the voltage was absolute zero, 0, 0.00, so it may just be the fact that it's you know, very highly neglected and just needs, you know, a lot of charging up. But it does seem to lose lose charge if it's just been sitting around. I mean, it's there's there's no liquid. You know, there should be no contact between these these uh, two um, battery posts. So I, I don't really know what's going on there. But anyway, just to sort of demonstrate exactly what's going on. Um, here we go. So we've got the battery connected up, both batteries connected up. The voltage is steadily climbing on that anyway, but um, so I've just had a, um, a headlight battery, uh, a car headlight on there. So it sort of seems to be sort of settling itself after that little load has been put on it. Anyway, so here we go. Starter up. Now it starts up very quickly, unlike some people's on, on the forums, like SD3D, SD3T, I was just watching, uh, you've got the sort of different stages, it will start up and get to a speed and then it will go through like a second acceleration. This doesn't do that, I do, you know, again, it may be down to the setup I've got, um, but really what I'm... What I'm aiming for is to have some form of generator, but what I want to do is on this end uh, have a flywheel of some sort, just to get a bit of weight behind it, and then uh, because it's, it's only this tiny little rotor, you know, it's not really going to be able to drive much. But if I get a, my thinking is if I get a flywheel on it, I should be able to then uh, run a generator of some form. Um, 
you know, this is only a tiny little project. It's, I wanted to scale this up eventually, but really I just want to get the basics down and sort of find out exactly what's going on and, and how far I can push this, what sort of talk can be had out of this. And therefore, you know, what size of um, what size of generator can be run from this. So, anyway, as you can see, the battery voltage is there. We go. It's dropping, as I said. So it gets to a certain point, and very very slowly it will just start dropping. Um, so, if you, I mean, if you've got any thoughts, please let me know uh, exactly what what we think is going on um, but really my next idea is to have a flywheel um, if you've got any ideas I mean originally I've just been looking at um, scooter flywheels and obviously then you've got the possibility for the the alternator to go on that as well so you know, I've got no idea about weights or whether this will have enough power to power it um, it's difficult to I don't really know how to test the torque of it to be perfectly honest so again if you've got any ideas please let me know um, so yeah there we go the battery voltage is steadily dropping Just have a look. So, just going to get the voltage across the run battery. So, yeah, that is going down quite quickly actually. Quite quickly indeed. Um, so maybe I need to play with my resistors, I don't know, but um, anyway, it's a little bit more of an insight into exactly what's going on. Um, so there we go, actually. Whoops. Um, Also, the run temperature of the uh, transistors is about 0.6 degrees above room temperature, and the run temperature of the coils is roughly one degree above room temperature. So, you know, it's, it's not bad really so far, I think. And uh, let's see if we can't get. Try and get this lined up. So there we go, 2400 and. Hang on. 2400 and. 2400, yeah. There we go. Now I don't normally have this on for very long. Uh, I certainly don't leave it on overnight or anything like that. Um, as I say, I, there's no need for me to charge this battery. So um, usually the most it'll get is probably about three or four hours go at it. And so I really don't know what happens in the long term, whether the, the battery voltage goes up to it, you know, as it was here, 12.55, drop down and whether it will climb again um, because it was, you know, an absolute zero when I got it a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, again, uh, any suggestions or thoughts would be most welcome. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.